Childhood is a time of change, so developmental researchers use special types of designs in order to capture and compare these changes. We'll consider three types of designs, cross-sectional, longitudinal, and longitudinal sequential. Identifying age-related changes is key in the study of development. Measuring variables as they change over time means chasing a moving target. Developmental psychologists use different strategies to address this challenge, each with their own advantages and disadvantages. A cross-sectional design examines different age participants at the same time. Once groups of participants are identified and recruited, the behavior of interest is measured, for example, the amount of time spent on the Internet. Cross-sectional designs are the simplest of the developmental research design types because all participants can be tested at once. However, this comes with an important limitation. Each age group, called a cohort, in a cross-sectional study grew up at different times in history, and this means different political, societal, and parenting norms. One of the biggest differences over the past few decades is advances in technology, so children born years apart likely have different exposure and access to it. A hundred years ago, radio was the most sophisticated form of social media, whereas today, most people have immediate access to all knowledge ever known at our fingertips. This is called a cohort effect and could certainly influence the results of our proposed study of age-related differences in time spent online. If we find differences, it's impossible to determine if they're related to age alone or if this is a product of the technological opportunities while growing up. One way to overcome cohort effects is by using a longitudinal design, where the same group of individuals is tested over time. Let's consider our earlier study of age-related differences in Internet use. We can start with a group of six-year-olds, then wait two years and test them again at age eight, and then again at age ten. This gets around the cohort effect, since all children are drawn from the same cohort. One obvious disadvantage is that this takes a much longer time than a cross-sectional design. This usually makes the study more expensive since participants need to be contacted again and again. Also, there is a problem of attrition, or loss of participants from the original sample over time, which is inevitable as people move away or are no longer interested in participating at later time points. The most comprehensive design is a longitudinal sequential or sometimes just called sequential design. This combines both the cross-sectional and longitudinal approaches to overcome the limitations of both. Let's look at how we can fit our original question of internet use into this framework. Let's look at children from two different cohorts, those born in 2012 and 2014. If we test them together in 2020, we'd have a group of six-year-olds and eight-year-olds. At that point, we could do a cross-sectional comparison. If we wait two years and test the same children again, we now have a group of eight-year-olds and ten-year-olds. We can do another cross-sectional comparison, but we also have the ability to do a longitudinal comparison in the same participants. Note we can also compare age cohorts born in different years. If we test again two years later, we have a group of ten-year-olds and twelve-year-olds, and we can make these three comparisons again. So this type of design is incredibly powerful since it can disentangle age-related changes from cohort differences. However, this research design is not used often because it's very time-consuming, expensive, and of course, with several groups followed over time, there is a great chance of attrition. The continual change that happens early in life means that special research designs are required. 